Welcome to episode 27 in this chess puzzle adventure series starring Bobby Fisherman, Average Joe, and Peter Potzer. Previously, back at Potzer Prison, the chef had given Peter Potzer some magic berries, and when he ate them, his rating immediately increased from 700 to 3,500. And he had asked for a rematch against Officer Pawnpusher at Potzer Prison. When the officer heard this, he laughed because he knew that Peter Potzer was the lower rated of the two, and last time he had destroyed Average Joe. Thinking it was going to be an easy game, he ushered Peter Potzer in, and they began to play. But before they started, Peter Potzer said, But if I win, you will let me and Average Joe go free. Pawn Pusher thought for a moment and said, Fair enough, thinking that there was no way in the world he was going to lose to Peter Potzer. And here's the game that they played. So Peter Potzer was playing as white, and he played the move e4. Officer Pawn Pusher responded with e5, and Peter Potzer played knight to f3, simply attacking the center pawn. Officer Pawn Pusher played d6 to defend, and Peter played d4. Bishop to g4 was played by Officer Pawn Pusher. He's pinning the knight to the queen, so that if the knight moves, then Peter Potzer would lose his queen. Peter Potzer simply captured, and then Officer Pawn Pusher decided to trade the bishop for the knight, and we get this position. Officer Pawn Pusher captured, and now Peter Potzer played the move bishop c4, which is threatening checkmate on f7. Officer Pawn Pusher chuckled, laughing at such a rudimentary threat, and he played the move knight to f6, simply blocking the queen. However, sorry, blocking the queen. However, here Peter Potzer played a nice move. If you would like to pause, what do you think white can play in this position? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is queen to b3. It's a very clever move, creating a double attack, attacking the pawn on b7, as well as creating the battery on the f7 pawn. So two threats, very difficult for black to deal with both of them. So after some thought, Officer Pawn Pusher played queen to e7, defending this and giving this pawn up and realizing that at least afterwards he could go for queen b4, force a queen trade, and maybe something could happen in the end game where he could make a comeback. However, Peter Potzer decided, no, no, I'm not going to even take that pawn, and he played the move knight to c3, simply developing a piece. Officer Pawn Pusher was feeling good about this and played c6, which takes away the squares from the knight, as well as unleashing his queen to defend the pawn on b7, and he was feeling like his position was pretty solid. However, Peter Potzer played bishop g5 and created a pin on the knight here on f6. Officer Pawn Pusher played b5, trying to gain some space, and here Peter Potzer played a very nice move. If you would like to pause, what do you think Peter Potzer played here? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, he played the crazy move, knight takes b5, giving up the knight for two pawns. Why is he doing that? Well, it's because he wants this bishop coming across with check. Now, Officer Pawn Pusher played knight to d7, but what you will notice about this position is that now there are two pins on both of the knights. And Officer Pawn Pusher is starting to have problems even moving any of his pieces. If you'd like to pause, what do you think Peter Potzer played as a follow up move? If you had a chance to look at that, he simply castled queenside, connecting his rooks and also bringing the rook into the attack. He's threatening to simply capture here because the knight can't really help because it is pinned. So Officer Pawn Pusher played Rook to D8 to defend, and here Peter Potzer played a brilliant move. What do you think it was? If you had a chance to look at that, the move that he played was Rook takes D7, a killer move, because if you look carefully, the king cannot take because the bishop. The queen does not want to take because the bishop. The knight can't take because this bishop is pinning it to the queen, or black would lose the queen. So the only move here for black is to capture with the rook. And now Peter Potzer played another nice move, if you would like to pause. If you had a chance to look at that, he played rook to d1, lining up again on the rook. If you thought that he could simply capture the rook, this is the wrong move, because the queen simply captured, captures, and black actually escapes and is doing very well. So this was a critical moment. Rook to d1 was the only strong move. And here, 
Officer Pawn Pusher played queen to e6, trying to get out of this jam, offering a queen trade. But Peter Potzer did not want any part of that. He captured the rook. Now, since it's defended with the rook, the queen can't recapture. So Officer Pawn Pusher takes with the knight. And now Peter Potzer played an incredible move. What do you think he played next? If you had a chance to look at that, the move he played was queen to b8. It's a brilliant move. It's a queen sacrifice. It forces the knight to capture. And the reason is you have the follow-up checkmate with the only two pieces left, the rook and the bishop. This is called the opera checkmate, when the bishop slices across the king and defends the rook, which is delivering the checkmate. An absolutely stunning game. Now, I have a question for you guys. Did anybody recognize this game it's actually a game that was played in the real world not just peter potzer and officer pawn pusher do you have a guess of which game this is well, if you had a chance to think about that this is a game uh it's called the opera game i believe because of the opera checkmate at the end but it was played by paul morphy against actually two people he played against a duke and a count that kind of teamed up together uh talked about you know what they were going to play together and yet he's still destroyed them he was one of the strongest players of his time and this is just a really nice example with some great sacrifices so i hope you guys enjoyed that game and now let's get back to the story now after being checkmated officer pawn pusher was stunned but he kept his end of the bargain and released peter potzer and average joe from potzer prison but as they were leaving the chef waved at them and said don't forget our deal as they were walking out of the prison. The officer had them set down outside of Fire Mountain, and that is where we will continue our story next time as Peter Potzer and Average Joe make their way towards the dragon's lair. They decided to keep their end of the bargain and try to find the dragon's tear to give to the chef. That's where we'll pick up next time. Thank you, and as always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.